Welcome to Free Academic English. I'm Geraldine and today I'm going to teach you how to study English for TOEFL or IELTS. This video will have two parts. The first part, I'm going to give you some thoughts about grammar, vocabulary and pronunciation. And in the second part, I'm going to give you some ideas about the four parts of the exam. Reading, listening, speaking and writing. All right. In the first part, we're going to talk about grammar, vocabulary and pronunciation. You know you have to study your grammar but you should consider that you have to study formal grammar because there's some grammar that is acceptable in speaking and many programs that are designed for speaking fluency in a normal context teach you. But what you need to study is the formal grammar that is expected from you in an academic context because these exams are academic. I will leave you some recommendations for study materials for every part in the description. But when you study grammar, don't just study the grammar structures, but these structures in context, in a variety of sentences. And also start writing. Start writing with sentences and then move into the basic paragraph structure. Practice speaking using the grammar that you have studied. In vocabulary, it's also very important that you consider that you're studying formal English. So it's not a good idea to waste time studying slang or very informal language because it's not going to be of much help for the exam in general. So I think that you can study from picture dictionaries, which are very good for things that you can study looking at pictures. And if not, use a great dictionary, but write definitions understand the words in context, look for synonyms, antonyms, and word families. Knowing all the words in a family is essential for these exams. Uh, and then we have pronunciation. Not many people study this, but I think it's very important. You should study the sounds individually, the sounds in context, the intonation of the English language, and the rhythm it has. Definitely, I'll send you to Rachel's English. But there are some other resources in the description. All right, now we move on to the second part, the four parts of these exams. The reading part. Many people have problems in reading and for improving your reading, you need to read. So I definitely recommend going to read theory because it goes to your level. Because it's no use or much use to just answer questions like if you were taking these exams, if your level is not there yet. But re theory, for example, will give you your level. You don't have to use re theory. You can read graded readers because they will adapt to your level. Just because to improve your reading, you really need to read. But choose the readers that talk about well, classic literature or informational um, and informational readers with a variety of topics that you know that are more common in these exams like science, biology, maybe psychology, in general, any topic, especially the ones that you're not familiar with, because that way you will also learn some vocabulary or a lot. <laughs> now, transform your reading into writing. When you have a passage or a book or whatever, you have to take that opportunity to practice your paraphrasing you're summarizing and giving your opinion too. Well, for writing and for speaking. In listening, you should also consider formal language. So listen to podcasts about academic topics or documentaries or movies and series that have an academic context, university context maybe, because you will get used to that. But it's not only listening to something or watching something with subtitles in English, I recommend, but to practice taking notes as well, to pick some words or phrases. And if you want to go beyond, you can transcribe parts of what you're watching or listening to and memorize them, those exercises are extremely help you, helpful for listening or take a listening course. Also, 
about reductions about each part of the exam, I'll leave some links. For speaking, I recommend learning songs because you can follow the pace of the song and the songs are pretty much the way people speak in the English language because there is a flow that you should get used to when talking, like if you're singing. Because when you're singing, you just don't stop. You continue with the same flow. And that's something that you can practice for your fluency. In addition, practice speaking all the time. We mentioned the readings. You can paraphrase, summarize, give your opinion and record yourself. Time yourself and do it over and over again. <laughs> Repetition and practice are key. Talk. It's very important to talk. It doesn't matter if you talk to the mirror, but practice speaking. And for writing, consider seriously taking a course on how to write an essay. Study the essay structure so you can write better. And talking about the essay structure, also pay close attention to the pre-writing process. Because a problem that many people have is not having enough ideas. And the pre-writing process is exactly <laughs> for that for generating ideas. So now that you are not taking the exam, but you're preparing for it, take your time on the pre-writing process. I am a fan of free writing, so I recommend practicing free writing as much as you can and writing as often as you can for generating ideas and then for writing complete essays as well. Not timing yourself as per at first, but with time because this will take a little while. Once you've studied something, go back to the beginning and you will see your progress. You will find mistakes that you made when you first started studying and that will motivate you to continue improving. Remember, you are preparing for an academic life, so don't skip steps. Thank you for watching. Please comment, subscribe, follow me on social media and I hope to see you soon.